Make me a channel of your peace. When there is hatred, let me bring your love. Where there is injury, your pardon, Lord. And where there's not to faith in you. Make me a channel of your peace. sisters and their families, for good health and harmony among them, with the help of Mary, Mother of God, and Saint Joseph and their patron saints, Respectius, Honora, Speratu, Stefania, Justina, Godeliva, and Aristides, and our patron saints Melchior and Renata. Thou shalt be offering this holy mass for the repose of the soul of Dennis May, whose anniversary of death occurs today. May he rest in peace. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary and the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kiri Bay, Kiri Bay, We 
He does not treat us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our faults. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and rich in mercy. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so strong is his mercy for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far from us does he remove our transgressions. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and rich in mercy. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brethren, none of us lives to himself and none of us dies to himself. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. with his servants. When he began the reckoning, one was brought to him who owed him ten thousand talents. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, with his wife and children and all that he had, and payment to be made. So the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that servant released him and forgave him the debt. But that same servant, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow servants, who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. He refused, and went and put him in prison, till he should pay the debt. When his fellow servant saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me, and should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant 
as I had mercy on you? And in anger his Lord delivered him to the jailers, till he should pay all his debt. So also my heavenly Father will do to every one of you, if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Last week, the Gospel was about correction, something we love to do but don't care to receive. Today's Gospel is about something we love to receive, but find it very hard to do, and that is forgiveness. First, we should forgive. As we look at the second half of the Gospel parable, the servant doesn't look all that bad. Someone owes him money and didn't pay on time. So he has him punished. That was justice in those days. It was harsh justice, but justice. What makes the servant's behaviour so outrageous, even after 2,000 years, is the first part of the story. He himself had a much bigger debt cancelled and he should have done the same. These days, we plan on God's forgiveness. We expect it. We know the confession hours in church and expect to go to church and be forgiven. Will God forgive us if we are unwilling to forgive others? We can go through the motions of confession but Jesus says that if we are unwilling to forgive others, the Father will not forgive us. The parable says at the end that because of the servant's behaviour, he was not ultimately forgiven. The Our Father contains what St. Augustine called the terrifying petition asking God to forgive us in the same way that we forgive others. The second point is that we need to forgive. Imagine a world or life where nobody ever forgave anything. Such a world would be cruel, cold, callous and frozen in place. To forgive is not to forget, it is not to excuse, it is not to condone. To forgive is to recognise the damage someone has done, to move away from revenge and retaliation, but to refuse to be damaged further by what that person has done. The alternative is to be trapped in the past, furious for years over ancient offences. The hatred, resentment and anger that go with that can become a spiritual poison in our life. To refuse to forgive is to allow a past hurt to stay radioactive in our heart and our life gradually poisoning our life. Forgiveness frees us from an obsession with past hurts. It helps us move on with our life and to grow in peace. St. Paul says in today's second reading that we are responsible to the Lord for how we use the gift of life. Do we spend our years stuck in painful, 
intersections. Long after everyone has left the scene and gone home, are we still there steaming and fuming for years? By refusing to forgive, we transform a past harm into a continuing hurt that can consume us. Finally, we can forgive. In fact, we do forgive all the time. We all experience hurts from friends, family, people at work. Most of the time, we edit them out and move on. Like natural healing, forgiveness happens if we don't keep pulling off the scam. Forgiveness doesn't show weakness, but strength and power. It enables us to stop reacting and to take control of ourselves. In fact, forgiveness does more good for us than for the one we forgive, because it sets us free. How can we begin to forgive another? The Lord says, pray for those who persecute you. Prayer transforms us from being a victim into becoming an intercessor. We can start to see people who have done us wrong in a new light, as individuals themselves in need of healing. To start the process of forgiveness, Prayer for the other is always a good place to begin. A second step is to pray for ourselves. Christ's sacrifice on the cross is the source of a great, huge river of forgiveness. At each Mass, we can ask the Lord to irrigate the hard desert of our soul with his water of forgiveness, to enable us to forgive and to be set free. The third step is to look to the future and not to dwell in the past. We all have hurts from the past. Forgiveness comes as we look forward to what can be in our life and not to what was. As the Book of Sirach says in today's first reading, Remember your last days. Set enmity aside. Remember death and decay and cease from sin. In other words, life is short. We all need to look to our future with the Lord. We should forgive. We need to forgive. We can forgive, because forgiveness releases our soul from spiritual paralysis and makes room for God's grace and will in our life. Forgiveness is the spiritual surgery that brings healing. And so, with joy, let us renew our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten not made, 
consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory, to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, gathered as one to celebrate the good things we have received from our God, let us ask Him to prompt in us prayers that are worthy of his hearing. For the Church, for forgiveness and mercy within her ranks, that anger may be put aside and love for one another may prevail. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the forgiveness of national debts, especially those of poverty-stricken countries who have no way Paying them back. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all of us, debtors to our Lord and Master, and owing Him everything, that we may see the little debts that are owed us in their true proportion, and forgive as we have been forgiven. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That we may no longer live for ourselves, but for our Lord and Master Jesus, who died and came to life in order to be Lord of the dead and of the living. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the suffering little ones who endure sickness and poverty, that God may redeem their life destruction and crown them with kindness and compassion. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our faithful departed, that God may put their transgressions from them as far as the east is from the west, and welcome them, purified and holy, into his kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. May the petitions of your church be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, so that we may receive from your mercy what we cannot ask out of confidence in our own merits, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, 
For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favour on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honour of your name may serve the salvation of all, through Christ our Lord. Reconcile the Lord 
so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for your sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save the Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in the saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Dabula our Bishop and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed Apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and 
those of you who cannot receive Holy Communion right now, we invite you to join in this act of spiritual communion. 
my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. against the wickedness and snares of the devil. Amen. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust down into hell, Satan and all the evil spirits, who wander through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Sing of Mary, pure and holy, Virgin Mother and devout. Sing of God's own Son, most holy, who became a little child. Fairest child of, fairest mother, of the Lord who came to Sing of Jesus, Son of Mary, in the home at Nazareth. Toil and labor cannot weary, love enduring unto death. Constant was the loving neighbor, though he went forth from her side. Or to preach and kill and suffer till on Calvary he died. Glory be to God the Father, glory be to God the Son, glory be to God the Spirit, glory to the three. 
Unto us, three martyrs, stand. 